welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. So the second and third week of command training moved onto more advanced stuff. The first week was more of standard commands and the basics of commanding. But now we moved on to the non-standard commands, which involves transferring files and memory to and from the ISS. So the MDMs, do you remember what that means? When I say MDM, it means an ISS computer. So these computers have different kinds of memory inside of them, similar to what you would find on computers down here on Earth. And depending on what we're sending and where we're sending it, we do things a little differently. We have the ability to uplink different files to the CNC MDM, or the king of the computer system. Now, depending on what its final destination is, the CNC will either keep it for itself or it'll be able to send it off to who it's for. We also have the ability to load things directly to an MDM. Now, the file uplink and the load have different constraints, so depending on the situation, we use one or the other. The things we send up are general changes to the MDMs and software patches. Also, every year or so, we update the version of the overall entire software of the MDMs. Kind of like how computers here on Earth get a new and upgraded operating system every couple of years. In the case that we want to collect data from an MDM's memory, we have to do what's called a data dump. Now, when we're doing a data dump, if it's not from the CNC, we have to set up pipes. Now, these pipes are kind of like pathways for the information, and we set them up to guide the information to know how to move from MDM to MDM, so it'll eventually reach the CNC. Once it gets to the CNC, it's streamed back down to Earth. Now, as a Cronus, I get a special role in all of this. Anyone can create a request to send a file to the ISS, or to request a data dump from a certain element. But, everyone has to come to Cronus to actually uplink these non-standard commands. Now, all of this knowledge will be tested at my very first oral board. This is where I sit in front of a panel of already certified Cronus, and sometimes other disciplines, and they question me on everything that I've learned to make sure that I retained it and remember it. Now, this one for our command certification is about two hours, but it's just a taste of what our final oral board will be like. And when I say final, I mean like a year and a half from now, when I'm ready to go on console. That one is about eight hours. That's right, eight hours of questioning. But they do have to make sure you know what you're doing before they put you on console, right? Well, this one at least will be on Wednesday, April 29th. So hopefully by that afternoon, I'll be able to tell you guys that I am certified to send commands to the ISS. So I got a question on Twitter to elaborate on the emergency warning, caution, and advisory messages I mentioned in last week's video. Now I don't know enough to give you every single message in all of these categories, but I can give you some general criteria. So advisory messages are system initiated and they are the status of certain events. Uh, cautions are less time critical, but they have the potential to become worse if ignored and they do not require immediate crew action. Now, warnings are a little more dangerous, and they do require immediate action in order to avoid a major impact to the mission or a potential loss of crew. Um, this one does require at least one crew member's immediate action. Now, I can tell you the emergencies, because these are the big three that we learn. So, an emergency is a life-threatening event that requires the immediate action of the entire onboard crew. And these big three are fire or smoke in a pressurized module, a rapid change of pressure in a cabin, so like a leak into space, or a toxic atmospheric situation, like ammonia. So that's kind of an overview of everything. Uh, I hope that answers your question a little. Uh, feel free to send me questions over Twitter or leave a question in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer a few more in future videos. That's all for this week. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages, and take a look at the first and previous episodes if you haven't already. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week and for many more, as we get one step closer to being on console. Hopefully next week I'll be able to tell you that I am officially command certified. See you then!